Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary. A very special welcome to all visitors who are worshiping with us for the first time. Please be sure you've taken a bulletin to follow along with the music for this Mass and to learn about what is going on in our cathedral community. Bulletins can be found near the entrance of our cathedral at the welcome desk. Catholics believe that the Eucharist is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ and that our sharing in the Eucharist brings us closer into unity with our Lord's Church. We invite practicing Catholics who are prepared and properly disposed to receive communion to come forward at that time. Others present not receiving communion should join with us in prayer and in song. Our second collection to today will benefit the cathedral art and environment. We thank you in advance for your generosity towards this very important need. Additionally, during our time for communion, if you are wearing a mask, we ask that you please pull your mask down below your chin before you approach the host, receive the host, and then pull your mask back up as you exit by the side aisles. Please stand for the singing of our introit hymn. When they call in tribulation, I will surely hear their prayer. Answer them and be with them in every trouble and despair. I will rescue them and free them, give them honor from above, and fulfill them with a long life, showing them my saving love. All within the Lord's protection, in the shadow of his throne, say you are my Lord and refuge, my trust is in you alone. From the snares of hell he frees you, and from deadly pestilence. Faithfulness, your shield and buckler, sheltered under God's own wings. Nightly terrors bring no fear, nor yet by day the arrows fly, nor the scourges of the noontime, nor the plague that, that stalks at night. God has given to his angels a most sure and strict command to protect you lest you stumble and to hear you in their hand. To the Father sing your praises, who made land and sky and sea. Also praises to the Son who saved us from the enemy. Praises to the Holy Spirit who helps us in times of need as it was in the beginning, it will be eternally. When they
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. When the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delightful to look at and good for food, with the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods who know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus, death came to all men inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? And the gift is not like the result of the one who sinned. For after one sin, there was the judgment that brought condemnation. But the gift, after many transgressions, brought acquittal. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression condemnation came upon all, so through the righteous act acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of the one man the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Praise and honor to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. 
He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this, Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Just as through the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. We have today, on this first Sunday of Lent, a tale not of two cities, but rather a tale of two events, a tale of two stories or narratives. The first is, of course, from the book of Genesis. Our first parents, Adam and Eve. They are created by love, by God who is love. He gives them everything that he can give them, life, divine intimacy, a relationship with himself, the wonders of life of which they are in possession. But for their own good, he wishes them not to know this mysterious tree of good and evil and its knowledge. Mysterium iniquitatis, the mystery of evil. They are created innocent, and they are given in their innocence, in their relationship with God, this one command. Do not eat of that fruit. Do not even touch it. And yet they listen to a false voice, not love, but all that opposes love not one in synergy with the will of God, but one opposed to rebelling against that law of love, that commandment, which is, again, for the good of Adam and Eve themselves. Eve, and then through her Adam, both together, listen 
to that voice of rebellion, and they do what they were told not to do, what they were commanded not to do, and from that moment, everything changes for them. It is a fall from grace. Intimacy becomes isolation. Joy and confidence becomes fear and shame. And so, in classical Christianity, we have called this the original fault, the original sin, with all of its consequences for our parents and for those who inherit our humanity, consequences in mind, in body, and in spirit. We would be left in despair if we left only with this story. And so we turn to another story. We turn not to a garden, but rather to a desert. Jesus, led by the Spirit after his baptism, the Spirit that had descended upon him like a dove, divine love itself, leads him to what is antithetical to the flourishing garden given Adam and Eve, a desert, a wilderness, where there is no life, where there is no water, where the beasts are wild rather than tame, where there is danger and vulnerability. It is there that the serpent who had tricked Eve and Adam lurks, waiting for the Lord. It is there that that tempter approaches him and qualifies his temptations. If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. If you are the Son of God, prostrate yourself and worship me, and I shall give you everything. He is, after all, the prince of this world. How else could he offer all of the kingdoms? Kingdoms that the Lord himself had created, but which had fallen. And now we're in the hands of that serpent, of that voice, of that antichrist, if you will. If you are the Christ, if you are the Son of God. And the Lord answers. He reverses the story. He tells the narrative again from Genesis. It is a rejection of that which would oppose love. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Pleasure, pride is not what we live on, but rather the gifts of God with trust and with confidence. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. It is written, says the Lord, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Presumption, again pride, is rejected by the Lord. And then finally, the invitation to worship, to worship evil, to worship a lie, to worship in the end nothingness rather than the fullness of life and of light and of love. Get away, Satan, he says. Get away. For it is written, the Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Pride and pleasure and presumption defeated by these words of the Lord. And the devil leaves him, and angels come and minister to him. Why did the Lord have to endure this? And how did he endure it? In what manner did he endure it? Yes, 
He is a model for us, giving us hope and confidence and strength when we are tempted. And yet his temptation is different from ours. It is a temptation, and this is a very important part to remember of our gospel if we listen carefully to our collect or opening prayer today, that we are invited to explore the riches hidden in the mystery of Christ. Who is he that is tempted by the evil one? How is he tempted? We are all tempted, including the Lord, and yet we are tempted from within. Heirs to Adam and Eve, heirs to original sin, and all of the consequences of that sin. An inner rebellion exists within each and every one of us. A hostility, however subconscious, but raw, primitive, and instinctive within us. I shall not serve pride addiction to pleasure, presumption. All of these temptations arise from within us, from within us. In classical Christianity, the great writers and teachers summed it up in one word called concupiscence. Concupiscence, that inner tendency within us. It starts even in childhood. Me, 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 me. Did I mention me? My incessant, insatiable neediness, ego demands. And running in the wrong direction through a darkness, through an emptiness within that leads to addiction, that leads to self-destructive behavior, that leads to worship anything and everything except the Lord, our God. The Lord himself is not like us, and that's the whole point. He has become one with, one of his own creation, joining himself to our humanity, but he is not a created person in that sense, a human person. He is a divine person, capital P, with therefore a divine nature. And that divine person, the second person of the Trinity, we will profess that soon in our creed, all of us together, takes to himself a human nature. He becomes flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit. And in that moment of his incarnation, his conception in the womb of the Virgin Mary as a divine person with a human nature, his humanity taking us into itself and our humanness, our humanity, is connected with, is able to communicate with the divine in a new and healing and enlightening and ultimately transforming way. The divine power is accessible to us in and through the humanity of the Lord. He does not possess within himself concupiscence so that temptation enters him from within. Such temptations would be alien to his soul, alien, repugnant to his intimacy, to his relationship with the Father, alien and repugnant to the very nature of love, he who is love itself. And so for him, temptation coming from the outside is not so much a test for him as it is a healing medicine, a remedy for you and for me. For in the mystery of the incarnation, the Lord in the desert, in the desert led by the Spirit, communicates to you and me what, could, what God could otherwise never communicate except through his humanity. In our weakness, he gives us divine strength. In our lies, he cleanses us with divine truth. In our darkness, he illumines us with divine light. 
life, light, strength. And so our journey to Easter is a journey in and through him, in the power of his spirit. It's not 40 days of giving up seized candies or making myself miserable. When will it end? When will we get back to Easter and I can eat what I want and do what I want? It is rather a new life communicated to us in the power of the spirit of the crucified, ultimately crucified, but risen Lord. And that Lord says to us, as he communicates the gift of his spirit to us today, all that he said to the serpent and what he says throughout every age to every human person on this planet. Number one, we do not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Number two, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And finally, number three, the Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Let us stand now and make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin this season of Lent by venturing into the desert with Christ, let us direct our petitions with confidence to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, that her leaders, especially Pope Francis and Archbishop Cordelion, may faithfully proclaim to the nations every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the leaders of the world, that they may advocate for an end to violence and promote the peace that can only come from Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those preparing to enter the church at Easter, who will come forward today for the right of election, that they will be blessed in these days of preparation. Let us pray to the Lord. For the health of all the sick and for those in need of prayers, especially for Lolita Ortua, Joe Enyart, 
and Julita Trinidad, that through our compassion, they may experience the tenderness of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, especially for Leila Fajardo Lukban, Ayo Johansson, and Zacharias Ortua Jr., and Father Dave Pettengale. That Christ, the just and merciful judge, may grant their souls a place of eternal rest, light, and peace. We pray to the Lord. For the intentions of this Holy Mass to all of St. Mary's Cathedral parishioners, let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we bring these petitions to you, trusting in your providential love and care. Please hear and answer them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice, and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and a sacred time. Through Christ, O Lord. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the paschal mystery we might pass over at last to the eternal paschal feast and so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Leni sunt celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit in nomine domini, Hosanna in excelsis. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you, firstly, for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Archbishop, and all those who holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your people, especially those for whom we now pray. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. 
in communion with those whose memory we venerate. First of all, the most glorious and ever virgin, Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. With blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and your holy apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven. To you, O God, his almighty Father, he gave you thanks and praise. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, 
and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the many gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offerings of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through participation at this altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we now pray. <clears throat> Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of light, refreshment, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Per ipsum et cum ipso et in ipso Est tibi Deo Patri Omnipotenti, in unitate Spiritus Sancti, omnis honor et gloria, per omnia saecula saeculorum. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you. And let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold he who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord Jesus Christ, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death but life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. To everlasting. We invite practicing Catholics forward to receive communion at this time. Others present are invited to join with us in prayer and in song.
Today's second collection will benefit the cathedral's art and environment. We thank you in advance for your generosity. Let us pray. <clears throat> Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. There is no concert today. Instead, the Archbishop will preside at the Rite of Election Mass today at 4 p.m. Each Friday during Lent, we will offer the Stations of the Cross in English right after the 12.10 p.m. Mass and in Spanish at 7 p.m. The Via Crucis in Spanish is followed by a soup supper in the parish hall. Please join us after this Mass, the 11 o'clock Mass today, for the rededication of the recently redecorated Monsignor Bow Room. Father Gerald Geronimo will lead the ceremony followed by refreshments. This Friday, March 3rd, is First Friday, Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. The Blessed Sacrament will open after the 7.30 a.m. morning Mass and will pause during the noontime Mass. Adoration will continue after Stations of the Cross, closing with the Holy Hours for Vocations and Benediction at 4 p.m. at the Guadalupe Shrine. Please sign up online with the posted QR codes in the cathedral or using the sign-up sheet near the entrance of the cathedral. Next Saturday, the Pueri Cantores Festival will take place in the cathedral, culminating in a short concert at 5 p.m., followed by mass celebrated by the archbishop at 5.30. 200 young singers from 10 choirs will provide the music. Thank you. There is a special Lenten prayer after each Sunday Mass during our season, so please bow your heads now to receive that special blessing. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in a tribulation, virtue be strengthened in a temptation, an eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us to overcome our sins and close by you to stay. As you with Satan did contend and did the victory win, oh, give us strength in you to fight, in you to conquer sin. As you did hunger and did thirst, so teach us, gracious Lord, to die to self and so to live by your most holy word. And through these days of penitence and through the passion tide, forevermore in life and death, O Lord, with us abide. Abide with us that through this life of doubts and hope and pain, an Easter of unending joy, we may at last Me espero aquí a que... No, no, no. Eh, besas el altar y vete de un solo para allá. No, yo beso el altar.